Senator Patricia Rucker is in studio with us. Speaking of road changes, delays, and uh, uh, issues, we've got Harper's Ferry coming up September the 12th and uh, Route 340, and this is going to be a nightmare, Patricia. What's going on there? Yes, so um, just to give you a little bit of background for those who don't know, uh, when I was elected in uh, 2016, it was one of my uh, number one concerns to deal with. I live on Chestnut Hill Road, and that cliff face constantly has rockfall, constantly. I mean, I have the non-emergency numbers saved on my phone because I'm always reporting. We've got rockfalls that needs to be cleared. And Yes? Is this the road that goes right along the river? They're out of, no. coming out of Harpers Ferry? This is the road that goes straight up the mountain from Route 340 right after you cross from Virginia into Maryland. Is I that, mean, it's, into West Virginia. It's that right turn if you're heading. Exactly. Yeah. If you're heading into West Virginia, it's a left turn. If you're heading yeah. out of West Virginia, it's, it's a right turn. turn. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough road. It is. And that cliff just, um, it's just basically bare rock. There are, of course, debris and weeds that grow there, which is helpful because it holds the rock in place but anytime there's any weather change and I mean any weather change rocks are gonna fall so when I got elected you know that was one of the, my very first conversations with uh, DOH and I found out that uh, Senator Unger had been advocating for them to do something for 12 years previous to my election and so I really, really became a thorn in their side that something had to happen. They finally did a survey, and when they did the survey, big surprise, they found that the cliff is unstable. So, <laughs> yes. Um, but anyway, so finally um, it is going to get addressed. They are going to do what needs to happen to secure the rock, put um, metal mesh netting to catch the rocks so that they go down and don't go across the road and by the way i don't know a single person on the mountain that has not had to pay for car repairs because of mm. these rocks it is a serious um, issue but the the bad news is 340 is going to have to be closed completely closed i i was trying to like advocate can we just have one lane open but it's impossible it's just too unsafe with what they're doing something catastrophic could fall we just can't take the risk so it is going to be closed starting september 12th in and we're hoping 90 days so that it will reopen december 12th december i thought 12th. they just expanded it 10 days to 100 days so that's actually a rumor and doh is trying to figure out who came up with that rumor, but it's, it's not at all true. Okay. So right now it is set to happen in 90 days. Now, obviously the crew that is working to do it, it's weather dependent. You've got some serious weather changes. They're not gonna be able to work. I mean, mm -hmm. they're gonna be up on this very, very dangerous cliff. So there's incentives that they've put, you know, to get it done in 90 days, but you know, like we can't control the weather. So obviously we're just gonna have to wait and see. And what that closure means from the Virginia line on 340, essentially to more or less where the river um, goes over to Shenandoah um, is gonna be closed, which means everyone from going into Maryland in that area, and I can tell you, like my husband, we're gonna have a 45 minute route around mm -hmm. and that route around is going to be using route nine that heads into um loudon county mm -hmm. which everyone knows it's a wonderful two-lane road and um so we're all i mean we're very familiar with that road of course and we all know it is going to get really 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 um congested there's it's just there's no way to speed up the traffic now they're going to have both Virginia DOH, Maryland DOH, West Virginia DOH, working together cooperatively to do whatever we can to facilitate. But it is a really big concern. And for those of us who live on Chestnut Hill Road, on both sides, so you're talking all the thousands of families that uh, live in Shannondale, for example, we have to get off the mountain. We have to get to work and uh, or to school or to all those things we have trash collection we have buses we have all of these different issues and um, lots of us are wondering if we're going to be able to actually go in or out because of the amount of people that will be taking the detour mm -hmm. and then of course our businesses all of the businesses impacted and it's a huge huge impact for them um, we're asking tourists to take this very long detour and go in this very slow congested traffic to get to us 
and we're very concerned, of course, that there will be tourists that just choose not to. I know that our Jefferson County Development Authority is working um, to find workarounds and to try to incentivize people to come in from other directions to use the mark train if they can. But yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit um, challenging, and we're all gonna have to be patient. Is most of this work West Virginia Department of Highway or Virginia? No, this is West Virginia. That so. The whole reason for this is that cliff face, which is in West, West Virginia. Right. So it is the West Virginia Department of Highways that contracted with um, someone to get this work done. And there's some penalties involved for this contract if they don't meet the deadlines, correct? I mean, you can call it penalties. I prefer saying they have incentive to get it done. <laughs> it's the yes. gill strap. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Carrot and the stick, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, I do want folks to know that there is a website set up just to give updates on the closure. And if you allow me, I'll just let folks know. It's us340harpersferry.com us340harpersferry.com So please go ahead, bookmark that website. It will give you an update on everything that's going on. You know, I'm thinking of two relatively small businesses, I guess. Um, there's there's an Exxon station right at the at the intersection of 340 and whatever that road is that takes you out to 9, yes. Lord help us. And then there's the Harper's Ferry Brewing Company up on, on the hill that nobody will be able to get to, right? Oh, no, no, they're going to do great because that's where the closure is going to be after them. So all of those folks are going to have an incentive. They're going to be literally forced to stop and go the, you know around but for there. the west virginia folks trying oh, to get in it's, oh no it'll be, it'll yeah be i mean awful. if you want to go yep. that whole circular right. route to get I, there i thought you meant it'd be such a headache for the work crews that after they were done they were just going to go pound some bruise <laughs> oh, there's that too yeah. <laughs> yeah. but no um actually i think this is a huge benefit for those businesses in virginia because they're going to have a lot more traffic going past those breweries um there on harper's ferry road and um after you've been in very slow traffic, you might want to stop so over and recover. Knock a few back, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Harvey. Oh, wait a second. Dylan Bishop in the uh, producer studio had his hand up there. Go ahead, Dylan. I, I can tell you where the uh, the thing about the, the deadline being extended from 90 to 100 days come from. There's a story in the journal from August 11th. It says the highway between Harpers Ferry and Maryland was scheduled for closure beginning September 12th, lasting 90 days to mitigate rock slides in the area. Justin Coors, project manager with Triton Construction, told the dozen or so gathered at the Ranson Civic Center Thursday that the timeline has been extended by 10 days with the now scheduled reopening set for December 20th. Quote, the goal is still to finish as fast as possible, hopefully earlier than that 100 days. Coors said, adding that the extra days are a result of large quantity overruns on the project. That is really strange because I was there at the Ranson Civic Center and I don't remember hearing that, but I did talk to DOH directly and they said the contract is still for 90 days, that that's still the expectation. It hasn't been changed at all. So they were surprised when they heard about, because I, I asked them directly about this rumor. Interesting. Mr. Harvey. Uh, Senator Rucker, I, I was going to ask you about the, uh, the, the recently completed special session. Uh, what, what were your top things that, that were accomplished during that? Um, well, you're assuming that I had top things that got accomplished okay. through that. Yeah. Um, I will tell you fairly, I, I really did not see anything that was super important except for the update regarding the property taxes so that we are not penalizing citizens who do their due diligence and pay their property taxes. Um, I think I thought that was good that we made certain that they would still get the money back for the half of the year. So, um, you know, if you were to ask me how the other bills really affect life. I mean, obviously the correctional officers getting a uh, pay increase was important, but not a whole lot else. Okay. Sound disgusted somewhat. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's frustrating to me as a legislator that we go into a special session and we get, you know, hey, we're gonna do these three or four things. And then there's 40 bills put on the call and in, not enough time to really look at them and read them. And we have to trust at that point that we're being told what the bills do. We have to trust the lawyers that crafted it. And um, I just don't believe that's a good governance. Did you have a chance to read all of the bills? I did not. It was impossible. I didn't even see, uh, like literally didn't even get handed the bills until the day we arrived on Sunday. Is that the point 
when you have this big dump of, of paper on, in the last minute? Is the point to bury stuff in there and get it passed that people don't know about? I sure hope not. I hope not. I mean, again, we are all on the same side, supposedly. You know, we have the, the governorship the House and the Senate all on, on the same side, and you would hope that um, no one's trying to hide anything. Um, but one does wonder, like, you've been working on it supposedly this summer, why didn't the bills get drafted early enough to send to the legislators, um, get our input? Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, I, I just feel if uh, good governance would not only let us see the legislation early, but would actually give us the opportunity to suggest, hey, I see you're trying to address this problem. I happen to know, because it's my expertise, we need to also do this, this, and this. Um, but, you know, what do I know? I'm just... I'm just a well, is there a... Re I mean, that, makes, that makes so much sense, but is there a, a, a reason, whether strategic or logic, to not do it that way? Because it kind of makes sense. Uh, I think so, obviously. There may be some strategy involved. Um, and it could also be, you know, very innocent. Hey, they just had more ideas and they just want to throw it in and, and do it quickly now. In an ideal world, um, I believe the special session should be for things that are a true emergency things that we really have to address because of some sort of, like if we don't address it now in this special session, something bad's gonna happen to the citizens, the state. And if it's not an emergency, you do it through the regular legislative process where it goes through the committees, where you have several people who are able to see the bill, amend the bill, debate the bill, and it's um, a lot more transparent. Well, we've, we've heard a lot about the critical vac vacancy pay and uh, about the property tax. Were any of these stealthy bills actually passed? Have they made it through to become law? So those bills, yes. No, uh, those did. But oh. of the others you're talking about, of the 45 or whatever the number is, how many of those actually went, were, were voted through and signed? I actually did not keep a count of exactly how many. But, you know, it, was, it wasn't it was all of them. Some of them did not make it through, and um, probably for legitimate reasons. And there were others that thought the same as I did. Like, this isn't really... An emergency. We don't really have to address this in this rushed matter. We want to have more time and discussion. So that was refreshing, and you know, hopefully, we can get better at it. And of the ones who, who of the ones which that actually <laughs> went through, this is how a writer's mind works. You keep you keep editing. Um, the the ones that that were not passed. Do you expect to see them again in January? I do. I do expect. I mean, if, if it's an actual concern, yes, um, it should show up again in January. Um, I will tell you that during our interims, which is what we were supposed to be in town for, um, almost all of the committee hearings got canceled because of the special session. And we had some very important topics, you know, scheduled, um, teed up for these committees. So it pushes that work back also. But um, but we have three upcoming interims. We have one almost every single month, September, October, November, and uh, hopefully we will be able to get some of that stuff in. I want to ask you about the HOPE Scholarship and the applications for it. Treasurer Riley Moore, uh, I was reading uh, yesterday, day before, uh, talking about opening up to year-round applications. Yes, and um, so I actually applaud him for making that recommendation to the HOPE Scholarship Board. Um, so when we passed the HOPE Scholarship, Obviously, there were things we put in there that were meant to be for the first year of implementation mm -hmm. to help the impl implementation process. And can we go back and catch up for everybody who just sure. moved into West Virginia <laughs> or never heard of this, what exactly the HOPE Scholarship is and, and what the legislature had to do with it? Sure, absolutely. So the HOPE Scholarship is an education savings account that the state of West Virginia um, will open up so that your state dollars can follow your student if you find that the public schools are not able to adequately address your children's needs um, and that they need something different. So the, the, that education savings account got passed in 2021. I'm just gonna make sure I get my dates right. And then it was challenged in the courts. And then it started implementation last year. And last year was the first year for Hope Scholarship recipients. And so, the Hope Scholarship Board, which is chaired by the state treasurer because he's the one that pays out the money, puts it into the accounts, um, they have the authority that we gave them in that bill to basically adjust the rules as needed, um, interpret the law, and determine uh, you know, if, if 
things that we didn't contemplate under the law needed to now be added in. So an example of that was when we passed it, no one even had heard of microschools, or at least no one I knew had heard of microschools, but that became something that kind of started popping up uh, during COVID. And so the Hope Scholarship Board had to pass a rule to allow microschools to be one of the alternative options for these families. So that's just an example. It's, it's, a, it's a way of being able to run the program with enough flexibility that you know, when changes happen, they can mm -hmm. make those changes. So using that process, the state treasurer recommended to the Hope Scholarship Board at their last meeting that they adjust the rules to allow for anyone who is eligible at any time throughout the year to apply. And that's really kind of what we had in mind when we said to be eligible, you have to have been enrolled for 45 days. So you can hit that 45 day marker, you know, mid October. Um, to say that you can only apply during a window in the spring, it really was a mechanism to help during the first year of implementation, but it was never meant to restrict you. If you have attended the public schools for 45 days, and let's say you're being, you're being bullied and you're suffering, you know, and your parents know that, you know, you don't want to go to school. You start having, you know, serious um, social issues. They don't have to wait until spring to actually apply for the Hope Scholarship. They can apply right then and there and receive it and get that child into a better location. Almost like a hardship exemption. It is. It is. And the idea of the Hope Scholarship was those who have... Um, the means have always had choice. They've mm -hmm. always been able to like, if their child is having an issue, we're gonna move, we're gonna transfer to a private school, we're gonna hire a tutor, or we're gonna homeschool. And you know, we have one family member who can stay at home. But what we, the legislature wanted to do is ensure that those who don't necessarily have the means also have those type of choices because you know, it, it does happen and we don't want them to feel like they have no choice. Um, I will also remind folks that part of this was also doing a lot more flexibility for the public schools, including um, allowing open enrollment is another thing that the legislature passed that allows you to transfer one, from one public school to another public school or even outside the county to a public school outside the county if there's space. And um, again, just giving options to parents so that they do what's best for their child. About 30 seconds left. Patricia, any final thoughts? Oh, goodness. Um, well, I will say I've been enjoying the fair. So those of you who have not made it to the Jefferson County Fair, come on over and I'll see you there every night this week. Yeah, that's uh, Sam Michaels. No, no it's uh, Jefferson no, County right. Fairgrounds. Yeah, Jefferson County Fairgrounds. There you go. Thank you so much for coming in today. Of course. Thank good, you. Good to see you again. Good information on uh, Route 340. And we should bring you back before September 12th. Okay. About that again, if you don't mind. No, don't mind at all.